guys, it's, it's time to talk about my top favorite books of 2014. I'm not going to do 14 favorite books of 2014. I'm just going to do the good old top 10. Actually, I just listed all the ones I really liked from this year and it happened to be 10 books, but let's just pretend otherwise, okay? I'm just going to go in chronological order of when I read them. So the first book is actually my top favorite book of 2014, and that is The Signature of All Things by Elizabeth Gilbert. I actually managed to win this in a Goodreads giveaway, and I'm so glad that I did because I absolutely loved this book so much. So much! <laughs> I read this in January and it was actually released in I think late 2013 and I gave it five stars. The writing is just beautiful, the characters are interesting and deep and problematic, and it's just so detailed and thought out and interesting and beautiful and amazing. The next book is Wildwood Imperium by Colin Malloy with illustrations by Carson Ellis. This is the third book in the Wildwood Chronicles and I believe the last book. I've mentioned Wildwood a ton. Colin Malloy is the lead singer of one of my favorite bands and I absolutely love Carson Ellis's illustrations and they're married and they live in Portland and I live in Portland so the books are set where I went to college and it's just such a cute story with like darkness so I read this in February and it was published in January of 2014 and I gave it five stars out of five. The next book I also read in February and that's A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. I read this when Leslie of Words of a Reader was doing a read-along and of course I loved it because it's about a girl who loves reading and it's a coming-of-age novel and it's incredibly well written and just such a charming story. This was published in 1943 and I gave it five stars. The next book I read in May and that is The Thorn and Blossom by Theodora Goss. This book is really awesome because you open it up and it's an accordion. And it has a couple of really beautiful illustrations in it and it's just a really sweet love story and you can start on either end and you get both sides of the story and it's just like a little cute interpretation of a fairy tale so it's nothing like super deep or philosophical but it's just a good old cute love story that is absolutely beautiful physically the thorn and the blossom was published in 2012 and i gave it five stars the next three books are in a series and i read them in august and that is Anna and the French Kiss, Alola and the Boy Next Door, and Isla and the Happily Ever After. It was the second time that I read Anna and the French Kiss, and of course I still loved it. I gave each of the books five stars, and they were published in 2010, 2011, and the last one in 2014. If you want just a good, cute love story about seniors in high school in Paris, who are spoiled rich kids, this is the book for you. The next book was actually the first book in the Outlander series called Outlander. I read this after watching the first episode of the new series on stars and I watched the rest of the series afterwards and loved both. The writing is pretty good and the characters are really interesting, the storyline is super interesting, and the setting is super interesting. I will definitely be continuing on with this series. I actually gave it four stars out of five because there are some scenes in there that made me just a tad bit uncomfortable, but I still loved it. And Outlander was published in 1991. The next book is We Were Liars. It was originally published in May of 2014 and I read it in September, a little after a lot of other people had already read it, so I kind of knew how it was going to go and I wasn't as surprised as some people were, but it's still phenomenally written, in my opinion, and I gave it five stars. And the last book, definitely not the least is The Sleeper and the Spindle by Neil Gaiman. When I saw that this edition was coming out in England, I knew I had to have it because I I could get this right here 
tattooed on my body. It's just that beautiful. And the rest of the illustrations and the story inside are equally beautiful. And it's just a quick little read that is a modern, not modern, that is an adaptation, whoops, spoilery page, that is an adaptation of a couple very well-known fairy tales and always with a nail game and twist. The Sleeper and the Spindle was released in October of 2014 and I read it in October of 2014 and rated it five stars. I highly recommend you check it out. So those are my top 10 favorite books that I read in 2014. If you'd like to know more about the different statistics of what I read this year, then check out my next video. So let me know what books you loved reading this year and if any of them are the same as mine. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye!